skeletal system have bones of different shape and length and we can easily classify them. First, let us take a look at long bones. Here in the drawing, you can see that the bones of the upper and lower limbs are example of long bones. Long bone is cylindrical and is characterized by presence of a medullary cavity. Next, let us look at the flat bones. As the name suggests, they are flat and they lack medullary cavity. A flat bone is typically thin. It is also often curved. Some examples of flat bones are the cranial bones, scapula, the sternum, ribs. Flat bones serve as point of attachment for muscles and often protect the internal organs. The next type of bone that we are going to take a look at is the short bone. Short bone is cube shaped and is approximately equal in length, width and thickness. Short bones are found in human skeleton, in the carpals of wrist and in the tarsals of the ankle. Short bones provide structural stability and some limited motion. Now let us take a look at irregular bones. Now an irregular bone is one that does not have any easily characterized shape and therefore does not fit in any other classification. These bones have a more complex shape like the vertebrae that supports the spinal cord and protects it from compressive forces. Some other examples of irregular bones are ethmoid bone and the sphenoid bones that protect and provide structural ability to the skull. At last, we are going to take a look at the sesamoid bone. A sesamoid bone is a small round bone. As the name suggests, it is shaped like a sesame seed. These bones form in tendons where a great deal of pressure is generated in a joint. The sesamoid bone protects the tendons by helping them overcome compressive forces. The patella are the only sesamoid bone found in humans. Now let us take a look at the structure of a long bone. The outside of a long bone is made up of dense compact bone, while the inside is made up of soft spongy bone. The end of long bones is known as epiphysis, which contains the spongy bone. Diaphysis is the central part, also known as the shaft, which is hollow from inside. The metaphysis is the part between epiphysis and diaphysis, which contains hyaline cartilage that helps in bone growth during the process of ossification in childhood and during puberty. Now, let us take a closer look at the spongy bone and its structure. Spongy bone has an appearance of sponge due to the needle-like bones forming dense meshwork in open spaces and these spaces contain small blood vessels. This particular structure is known as a trabeculi. Let us observe the cross section of a long bone in detail. Long bone has a hollow cavity known as medullary cavity that contains yellow bone marrow. The bone is covered by strongest organic layer known as periosteum. The bone is supplied oxygen and nutrient through the nutrient artery. Beneath the periosteum, you have the compact bone. Now it's time to observe compact bone in detail. The compact bone is covered by periosteum. Compact bone have cylindrical units known as osteons. Compact bone contains collagen fiber that provides the bone with tensile strength. The osteons are supplied by blood through Haversian canal and Walkman's canal. These canals houses the branches of nutrient artery. Haversian canal is also known as the central canal. If we look at the structure of osteon in detail, we will see that an osteon has semicircular rings known as lamellae. And between these lamellae, there are spaces called lacuna. These lacuna houses the mature bone cells, which are known as osteocytes. Osteocytes are supplied by canaliculi, which are hair-like canals that connect each other and central canal. Hence, we can say that osteon is the functional unit of the bone, just like how nephrons are the functional unit of the kidney. Now, the question is that, 
are osteocytes the only bone cells well the answer is no so let us understand about the bone cells in detail osteocytes are mature bone cell that maintains the mineral level inside the bone and also regulate the bone metabolism osteoblasts whereas are immature bone cells that are primarily involved in ossification which is bone formation they secrete osteoid and get trapped and after getting trapped they become osteocyte osteoclasts are bone breaking phagocytic cell derived from the hematopoietic stem cells they are involved in bone remodeling and are present in the area where extra amount of bone is needed to be scraped off this is how osteoblast and osteoclast maintain bone and calcium homeostasis osteoclast derived from hematopoietic stem cells breaks the bone and supply the calcium to the blood whereas osteoblast that are derived from mesenchymal stem cells utilizes calcium from blood and forms new bone osteoblasts are converted to osteocytes when they get trapped hence osteoblasts and osteoclasts are important regulators of bone formation and calcium homeostasis this was the entirety of today's video i hope the lecture was interesting and helpful you can post questions in the comment section if you have any and do not forget to subscribe to my channel and remember happy learning